right, welcome to Radio Labyrinth Presents Interviews. We have two special guests who've both been on the show before, but this is the first time, I believe, on video we've had both of you, right? Just Waco last time when, when we were talking Paradise PD. Or... If you're uh, an Atlanta native or if you went to UGA and when, the late 90s, early 2000s, mm -hmm. these guys as the, the creators and hosts of the damn show and performers in the damn show. And also Paradise PD, Brickleberry, and now a brand new animated show on netflix called farzar please welcome our guests this week waco o'gwin and roger black guys welcome to the show great to be here yeah, man thanks for coming on you guys have another animated show this is what makes four three animated one uh you know stanker vision was sketched but it had some animated bits in it right the koala it had the koala which if you can call that animation <laughs> <laughs> it's still I, funny i was doing it in uh like photoshop i was yeah. trying to figure out how to that was the mtv2 budget yeah we had no no line out of for animation and basically i had to do most of it and it looked like shit but it it did the job i guess <laughs> you guys look great where, where are you both located now we're both in burbank Roger's on the bike path down there. Got a nice place down there. You know you've made it when you live in front of a bike path. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're in Atlanta and you live near the Beltline, then you can, you know, go out and have your avocado toast and get robbed. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a good day. Yeah. So tell us about Farzar. We watched the trailer. The, the trailer was hilarious. So oh, um, thank you. I'm expecting that the show will be hilarious. Where did this come from? And we, we were talking to Netflix about Farzar before Paradise even came, before Paradise even existed. Like this was a show we wanted to do after Brickleberry. Mm -hmm. But it, and, and it got it, you know, it looked like it was it was getting somewhere and then you know, it fell apart. Some executive decided they didn't like space or <laughs> didn't think sci-fi was worthwhile or whatever. So then we came up with Paradise. So this has just been sitting there. And it, it was a much, much different version of the show. Uh, basically, we just took a bunch of stuff from the original Farzar and put into Paradise, like, like Hops. And there was like a version of Hops. And then there was a version of Bullet in the original Farzar. But then we did Paradise and we didn't think Farzar would ever, anybody ever see it or hear about it, you know. So uh, they started asking for another show. And that's when we started thinking about it again. We always wanted to do, you know, sci-fi. Rogers is, is huge in the sci-fi. Way too much. Star Wars guy. Oh, yeah. Way too much. Yeah. But for animation, you know, sci-fi is just great because there's way less rules you feel like you have to follow. Not that we had a lot of rules in Paradise, but uh, it's even, it was easier to come up with ideas for this show, for episodic ideas and stuff. And it must be that they, they have more money for an animated budget than they would for anything else these days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's easier, much easier to draw than, than do a ton of CGI and, you know, costumes and set design, everything. You know, you just draw it. You know? Right. So, yeah. That's the same animated style as the last two shows. So where did you guys come up with that? I mean, that was back in Brickleberry, you know, right. we were just trying to get something that, if you saw a character you would know it was it was ours so you know we just try to tweak everything and have a consistent look throughout the characters so uh you know like a three in their ear and the eyes separated and smaller eyes and the mouth not moving off the face you know just things hopefully when someone sees a character from any one of our shows they know it's our stuff has made the joke in the in the trailer about you know this is not futurama this is not rick and morty yeah was that something you guys were concerned about i mean is getting into this territory i mean that's what ever any i can remember when the tom green show came out people were comparing it to like jackass or something or maybe it was vice versa i can't remember which came out first but it, it, you don't even have to be similar and Pete, that's how the human brain works they got to go it's like blank every time Anytime anything comes out, anytime our stuff co comes out, it's like it's like blank, especially when they just see the trailer. So we just like to say what they're about to say right before they say it. So hopefully they feel really stupid because, of course, that's what everybody and people. It didn't stop people from saying it either. But 
but yeah, but the joke was a little kid was like, is this like Futurama Rick and Morty, which we knew that was the two things we were going to get. And, you know, comparing our stuff to Rick and Morty is kind of crazy. We Brickleberry came out before Rick and Morty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not every sci-fi is our show is nothing like it does have sci-fi elements like that but it's not it's one of our shows is if you want to compare it to anything compared to brickleberry and paradise pd because that's what it's like you know our humor is not like rick and morty which is the fine show but uh no it's not it, it, aside from the you know sci-fi elements not like either show really it's pretty cool that you guys have created a, your own type of look in your own different universes for your animated shows and and how big do you have like as far as the fan base goes are people really loyal to what you do yeah i mean that's the whole reason we even got to be on netflix because those brickleberry maniacs they were like demanding they were finding the addresses to the executives houses <laughs> and demanding that they bring brickleberry to netflix and it almost happened but they decided they'd rather have a show they can own, mm -hmm. you know, because when Brickleberry hit Netflix, it was really way bigger than it ever was on Comedy Central. But, it yeah. seems like Comedy Central be a little tougher to to negotiate with or deal with, sort of like Adult Swim, big corporation behind them. Fox originally, Fox bought the show. They were the studio, and then Comedy Central was the network that mm -hmm. that it aired on. So we had two kind of studios that we we would have to answer to. Right. And you have to like Netflix, Netflix would have to license it through Fox. And there was this uh, kind of war going on between those for a while, you know, just like any other networks and studios, you know. Did your deal leave it open to where you could do more Brickleberry if you decided to do a movie or something someday? No, 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 no they don't. They won't let us do anything. I can't even go to the library and check out a book. <laughs> <laughs> for for three years, they own us. They tell us what what you know. I, I don't think we can even act, or not that anybody wants us to, or do voices or anything on any other shows until the overall deals up. Because we were talking to Comedy Central about Brickleberry before this deal with Netflix came through, but once that happened, there was no chance. Which is fine. We love working with Netflix and they've been really good to us. So uh, we still like to do Brickleberry again one day. They they bring back a lot of stuff. I mean, a cartoon can always come back. But no, we'd love to do more Brickleberry if if we if we got a chance. If once we're done with Netflix, you know, hopefully we have a long relationship with them. But now you yeah. both are doing voices uh, in Farzar? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do one voice uh, <laughs> in all three shows. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Roger does a lot of different stuff. The Southern voice is that Bobby Possum Cods. Yeah, he was Bobby, Robbie, and now Farzar. His name is Flobby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds like a joke, but it's it's true. It's true. Yes. Every every single time, and I think I brought this up a couple of weeks ago on the radio show because uh, Eric von Hessler is a NASCAR fan. Anytime someone mentions Dale Earnhardt, I always say either out loud or in my head, "I caught me a legend." <laughs> oh yeah oh man that's that's, that's going way back should tell you how many times I got, remembers that i got high in 2000 and 2002 and, and watched those dvds and took them with me everywhere i visited and said you guys gotta watch this it's a different world now oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we had nothing to lose back then you know but it was fun you know we go back and we watch we watch the old stuff and yeah crack up it at most of it it's just funny <laughs> stuff so i'm glad i have those dvds so someday i can transfer them to digital and show them to my son he's too young he's only uh 14 months so yeah hang on to them because those might be the last ones in existence i heard lance reddick and uh dana snyder in the in the trailer who, who else is voiced in this kari walgreen uh carlos Alas rocky uh david k who was just in Eternals. And we had a guy from Eternals in our show, which is <laughs> insane. But they're all great. Great. They love they love doing the show. You know, so many of them do kids stuff all the time and like all day. And then when they come and get to play around with us, they, uh, they have a good time reading our stupid dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> and Lance, you know, he was on Paradise. Yeah. We 
we play Destiny 2 with Lance like every Saturday, which he's also the main character that gave, which is weird hearing his own voice uh, talk to you than hearing him in your headset. <laughs> That's cool. Seeing him as such a serious actor uh, yeah. in any drama that he's in, and uh, and then hearing him swear and and be funny as shit in an animated show that's pretty cool oh man we love working with lance like that's why we wanted because on the wire he's so serious and it's right. like if you could get that that guy saying like ridiculous lines that would be so funny and yeah he said all the crazy stuff like when he first came on we're like, I think he's going to quit when he reads the script. <laughs> he comes to the table read, and we couldn't tell whether he liked it. Like, oh, I think he hates us. But but when he got to know us, he would just crack up at the dumbest shit, you know? <laughs> right. So we're like, okay. we He has basically the same sense of humor we do. He just does a lot of serious roles, which he's great at. But right. we love working with him. And, yeah, he gets crazy in this show. Are there any uh, voice actors, regular actors who do voice work too, that that you wanted to work with or have been close to getting that you haven't been able to yet? Uh, Mel Brooks, you know, we always wanted to get Mel Brooks, but he always turned us down. <laughs> <laughs> really, that's shocking. Well, Roger, you know, got to we got Mark Hamill and Brickleberry, and he was very excited. Oh yes, I was I was a little excited. <laughs> yeah, fanboy out a little bit. Oh yeah, man. That was before the new movies, and we tried to get him on Paradise, and he was like, no thanks. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I got a nice payday from Disney for the movies. I'm good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he's fine. But he was great when he came in, really cool, and down to you know pretty much do whatever we wanted and sign all Roger's toys, too. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Oh, I, oh, I happen to have a uh, a Bestman Fatigue uh, Empire Strikes Back Luke Skywalker in my bag. Well, how'd that get in there? <laughs> we had Chatner come into the regular guys once, but I guess this is 2010, maybe, or 11. He was doing Dragon Con, and he actually came to the studio. Jeff had a communicator from the original series. I turned around, and he saw it in my hand, and he just goes, uh, no. <laughs> he said, no, oh my god. Not even no, he just uh, uh no. <laughs> See, that's what George the is talking about. Shit like that. <laughs> uh, I decide <sighs> look. <laughs> See, George will oh, he'll oh do it. He'll do it. Musculate you. That, that feud he has with uh Shatner is so funny. I know, I love it. I I talked to him about it when when I met him. And uh, oh, Bill, yes, well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Shatner even remembers who he is, barely. You know, you can tell who listens to Sturt. One of my neighbors in Denver is a small black child, <laughs> <laughs> he's right. so great on Stern. He is great on Stern. He was on, was he on the last time you were on, Roger? Uh, no, he usually like sits in like maybe once a month or something. I saw him at Howard's birthday bash and. Is a super super sweet guy. He's getting up there, man. Like all all those Star Trek guys. Are oh yeah. 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 Are there any cast members from the Stern show appearing in in Farzar? Uh, Sal and Richard. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're uh, what episode five or six, something like that. Yeah, he Sal plays a zucchini. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> and what, he's, got a, he's got one line and he said it 75 times <laughs> i know we were waiting on howard to play it but he, he never did so no yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he didn't play it and, and and richard is a severed head right uh he's uh, <laughs> it's a weird episode is it his real voice or is it f well he's kind of doing like the virus remember that prank phone call where he called gary and he was like i'm i'm the flu yeah yeah shoo shoo something flu <laughs> yeah something flu so he's kind of the flu boys yeah okay hi gary it's hi, the gary. Yes. <laughs> it's his other voice yeah I watched the the other day on YouTube. I watched the first appearance where Gary came into the studio. I thought Artie was going to have a heart attack. <laughs> um, this shit was so funny back when Artie was on. I mean, it was just so many great moments and so entertaining. Whether Artie was being funny or trying to kill somebody, right, right. <laughs> he was. He tried to kill Roger a couple times. Really? <laughs> Did he get mad at you a couple times for no reason? Yeah, yeah. You know, I. I uh, there were reasons. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but you're just roasting him. He's used to that. Yeah, but you know, 
They're, they're, there's a lot of lines. It could be crawled. Yeah. We have a great voicemail from Artie where he <laughs> cusses out Roger. Oh, yeah? But then, then after that, Artie did a benefit when, when Roger's hair, uh, parents' house, like, blew up or burned <laughs> down. Artie did a benefit, you know, to yeah. benefit Roger's parents. That was after the voicemail, you know. So Artie, Artie's really hot and cold, you know. Yeah. He's kind of disappeared again. He'll come back, do a couple episodes of a podcast, and then go away. Yeah. I want him I want him just to do one interview with Howard. I mean, just one more. That would be yeah. incredible. I don't think it's ever going to happen, but it would be so awesome if it could. I don't think Howard likes digging in the dirt like that. With a No, I don't think it's going to happen, but yeah. maybe like last day, you yeah. know, I can dream. But it would it would be incredible. I'm sorry to keep talking about Howard. I hope you don't mind. But you were on recently promoting the show. So um I met high pitched Eric twice now, once before the pandemic and once after. <laughs> I, I went to work one day and he was just sitting at a computer at WSB. And I go, Why are you here? I'm friends with Mark Aram. <laughs> and uh I, so I ended up talking to him for quite a while, a couple of times, and he seems like a a nice guy now there there's again a video uh, on youtube i think of, of did he he stayed with you at some point roger it, what's he what's he like to hang out with i have never hung out oh. with him he's just no, seems he like a nice guy stay with me. he would uh, still yeah. be there <laughs> yeah no we we filmed something in place um for fourth of july right wicko yeah in between shows where he had to act like or no he didn't act like he ate like a whole thing of like <laughs> over mac and cheese. Like, oh. like a gallon of mac and cheese he ate, yeah. yeah. And what, was it hot dogs or something? We were playing like our redneck characters and, and we were pretending like that he was your cousin, Roger's cousin in from out of town and he brought him over to Bobby's house and he was in just tidy whities and nothing else. <laughs> which he looked nude because his belly like covered the underwear. <laughs> so yeah he, he was funny yeah uh, he's a good sport they, there were more or less props but he ate the whole thing and then after we finished filming he's like let's go to ihop <laughs> so we're taking to ihop he orders a fucking stack this tall of red velvet pancakes with syrup and and whipped cream <laughs> Now, yeah, eat. <laughs> all right my last stern question because i know these guys have questions too but it seems that he's been pretty good to you guys um especially you know roger slash yucko um have you had obviously have you had to tone down your yuckoistic uh behavior for the modern era and, and what's it like to do the show remotely as opposed to in person being in that studio or it's was always such an intimate setting well, as of right now, Yucko lives in a uh, in a Trader Joe's bag. Okay. Home. So, uh, but no, Howard's been great as far as like letting us promote stuff on there, and and yeah, I mean he's just been instrumental, like help even like like damn show days in Stanger Vision, like he would plug it, and you know we would sell DVDs all over the country, which was really really helped us out. Right. And he was able to get an agent and everything like that to sell more stuff so but you can't walk in and do a lot of those jokes you used to do anymore right no who would <laughs> <laughs> Shit. now notice that you uh you do have a tiktok for some old yucko videos that's not us all of them there's like 12 of them that's what i was trying all... to figure out which one if any were actually you guys they're all fakes really all right yeah, it's all they have they have millions of views. <laughs> yes, yes, they do. They have multiple millions of views. Yeah, yeah. You make money off of that if you're a person on TikTok and you get millions of views. Do you get anything for that other than? I don't know. I don't know how you make money on TikTok. I guess people. Are, I don't know why else they'd be on there. Yeah, they're not making money, but I don't know. And you know, with YouTube, they made it easy to take down videos, but it's impossible. You've got to like hire a lawyer or something to get these things down so you know we just let it ride fly to beijing and ask whoever owns tiktok to... <laughs> yeah you guys ever do any pop culture conventions because uh, we always promote dragon con uh and with your body of work and your fan base it would be a huge draw we're gonna go, uh we're gonna comic con i mean not to do a panel just to go because netflix doesn't really do it you know they don't really do conventions right. 
we used to do Comic Con with Brickleberry every year, have a yeah. panel, the whole thing. It's right. a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Come back and do Dragon Con or Cusa Con, which is the new one in Rome, Georgia. Oh, Rome, Georgia's got their own con? Yeah. Cusa yeah. Con. You have to be careful how you say it. <laughs> what does that mean? Cusa. Cusa River, isn't that what yeah, they did there? Cusa uh, okay. River runs through there. Are you guys back working in the offices? Or are you still doing everything remotely? We got back in a writer's room like the last, what, eight weeks of writing or something yeah. like that? Yeah. But we wrote two and a half seasons on Zoom. Like Farzar was done completely from Roger's duplex in my guest house. We never left. We never saw anyone from start to finish from writing, animatics, boards, recording the actors, getting the animation, retakes, mixes, all <laughs> on Zoom, everything. It's, I can't even believe we're able to do it. Yeah, that's another good thing about animation is like, that was pretty much the only game in town when, during COVID because, you know, it, it was hard to do live action stuff, if not impossible. Right. You know? But yeah, the like most, we, yeah, the most depressing way to make a show. Yes. It's on Zoom. <laughs> How do you get the audio quality as good as it is? <clears throat> they had little kits they would send out to people's homes. Mm -hmm. They get it figured out. And like Lance Reddick isn't standing in a closet with a sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <That's true. laughs> yeah. Now now you say the, the quality is good. I'm not sure if the quality is as good. But <laughs> I, What's I don't than think than most people can tell, but nothing's as good as going to a booth you know but yeah they, like roger said these actors were in their closets with the clothes behind them to dampen the echo <laughs> did that make would that make editing and getting the sound design was there tricks had to be manipulated or you couldn't go straight yeah, they forward would, like you they would to? try to put some filters on or whatever they do you know the engineers and to me it sounds just as good for the most part but, I mean, uh, yeah, they're sending like, you know, state of the art equipment out to these people's houses. But yeah, it's like, it, it was tough. But yeah, they got it all done. Looks great. Sounds great. Like, if you didn't know it was recorded in Lance Reddick's closet, you'd never know. The, the biggest thing that would drive us crazy is there'd be so many blown takes because in the studio, our engineer would know to ride the button. And if Tom Kenny was whoever was screaming, he would never lose a take. But like half the tapes are just blown because the actor had to control the gain or volume, whatever it is, you know. And if he didn't turn it down before, it was just like completely blown out. So we had a lot of blown takes. Asking talent to, to know how to do any of that. I work in radio and I don't know how to do any of that. <laughs> yeah, they, it was a challenge. Writing was the toughest part on, on Zoom. You just everybody talking over each other constantly. Right. But our recording was, was pretty tough too. So, so being Athens boys, I wonder if you've heard about this, any thoughts or fun memories of the Georgia Guidestones? Never heard of the Georgia Guidestones. So they got blown up. Really? When you my, were my, my wife used to work in Elberton. Hey, Roger, had you ever heard of them before? Uh, was that that Nawapian? Uh... These were things that somebody built in 1979, an anonymous person. And it was all about population control and save the earth. So, you know, conspiracy nuts thought they were a... Uh, Unlike Satan, I mean. Yeah, globalists. <laughs> yeah. That's devil. it. You figured that's, that's it. Devil. That's, the... <laughs> that's some devil shit. Let's yeah. blow it up. Well, somebody wow. finally did, and they raised them. <laughs> it's just funny to see that happen. It's, 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 it's national news. You know, I'm, I'm hearing about it out here. I've never heard. John Oliver. Oh, oh yeah, cool. Yeah, we were trying to get in the Athens paper. Like, no, someone blew up these godstones. We're gonna be covering that all week. Like, really? <laughs> That's gonna take a week to cover that. I wish I'd lived to see it. I hated those <laughs> ugly. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. That, I mean, nobody knows who put them up, right? It's like it was just kind of a strange yeah. message, and yeah, probably just to mess with people, if I had to I guess. Yeah, which would of, seem like it finally worked. Pedophiles, you know, that run the world. To put that shit up. <laughs> There's a bunch of lizards in Albert County to put a lizard people. That's right. They have a pork pole in, in the they middle. They slid out from under a rock and stack, started stacking them up. Yep. <laughs> Albert <laughs> County, the gra granite capital of the world. Stack it shit up. <laughs> they're they're going to be happy to rebuild those, right? I mean, I'm sure they're going to put them back up now. 
I'm probably a mixed use community of going there. So you'll be able to go to Jersey Mike's and Chipotle. <laughs> Just throw another dollar store up in there. Yeah. Dollar, dollar General. All this publicity, somebody's going to make money off of. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> what, well, what are you guys up to next before we let you go? Because thank you for, by the way, this is a Sunday. So we appreciate you doing it. Oh, no problem. Uh, we've got Paradise PD, the final season coming out December 16th. Nice. So mm -hmm. that was the other season we wrote uh, on Zoom. So, and then uh, hopefully we'll be working on season two of Farzar. We'll see. You know, we should know shortly after uh, after premieres. You know, I if we, we feel pretty good about getting to do to do the second season. Netflix usually, you know, at least do a couple seasons. Yeah. So, uh, what's the algorithm? The everybody needs to binge the whole thing in, uh, on the first day. Definitely by the first week. Yeah. Yeah. You want to get through the whole thing because that's when it really counts. If you watch just uh, half the first episode and give up on it, then that's a negative. <laughs> <laughs> that won't be a problem. To try to try to get through it if you can. It's you know we, we I, like it. I think it's funny. I'm old fashioned and I, and I like the week to week releases. So Netflix, it's difficult for me to to binge an entire show in in one sitting. But I understand that that's what you got to do now if you want to show that you really love the show and want more of it. That's right. That's right. If you if you want more of the show, you need to get it get it watched in about a week uh you don't have to do it all in one day right but even if you don't watch it just let it play Shit, I, <laughs> yeah. six, I just watched six episodes of sesame street jeff you can do it <laughs> <laughs> you know they talk about the differences between people's hairs and, and uh you know people why they don't have moms now they never did that when we were kids but it's interesting to see <laughs> it's a whole different show huh yeah cookie monsters <laughs> eating avocados it's weird <laughs> is he eating, he eats healthy stuff though he does he still eats cookies but he but the one we just watched he had to get in his truck with some little muppet i've never seen some monster and they go to an avocado farm and they make a do the fish that bitch <laughs> okay big bird is uh stalking the uh supreme court justices now standing outside <laughs> funny give everybody a little teaser about what what they'll expect when they when they watch fires are the, this week on netflix well you know we've got a lot of a lot of twists and turns as we always do you know that's a, another good thing about netflix is we get to do arcs which on brickleberry they just wanted all standalone episodes so someone would break their neck and then next episode he's fine <laughs> so you know everything has consequences and we've written a cool arc for season one that that's got a lot of twists and turns you know we got a lot of our you know like got a lot of our humor in it that, that the fans should like but uh you know we're proud of the story too yeah. so in in the voice cast is amazing like dana is doing three characters and all of them are unique and, and great and the entire cast is is really good i mean it's a dream for us to get to do a sci-fi show and we really you know use every bit of that sci-fi in these 10 episodes hopefully people will, learn, will enjoy it that's awesome congratulations to you guys i love the fact that you you guys have made it so big and and uh you know it makes me happy and plus the stuff that you do is funny so that's really cool cool thanks a lot yeah thanks man. for having us july for 15th. On. yeah say when it's on Jeff. july 15th netflix well, yep. watch them all the first day or the first yeah, watch them first day let them play look at that <laughs> algorithm i guess we're all at the mercy of the algorithm and the guy stone <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> don't forget that shit man i mean they're gone now but we Forget can build that. them thank you guys thank, thank you guys you. all right see you guys soon bye-bye bye-bye see you roger